Hello, I'm Pastor Mike Mishock from Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Mound, Minnesota. Welcome to this message, I Am the Light of the World, based on Jesus' words to us from the Gospel of John. This is a message that was first given on Ash Wednesday at our church, Mount Olive Lutheran Church, uh, but will also um, be given at other churches in the area. Once again, this year we are doing what we call a Lenten round robin, where four uh, of us pastors are taking turns visiting each other's churches. And uh, all of our messages during this Lenten season are based on the I am statements of Jesus. And so uh, my first message is on Jesus' words, I am the light of the world. And uh, to begin, we'll look at a couple of scripture readings um, regarding what the Bible says, what God's word says uh, about light. A reading from Isaiah chapter 42. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth and what comes from it who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. O Lord, have mercy on us. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what, what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. O Lord, have mercy on us. A reading from John chapter 8. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone who judge, but I am the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. O Lord, have mercy on us. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear friends in Christ, light is one of those things like water, 
like air, like so many things in our world that is very commonplace. We don't think twice about it most of the time. And yet it's something very mysterious and there's a lot to learn about it. You know, if we ask the question, what is light? How does it work? Well, we might get different answers. If you were to ask a physicist, for example, what is light and how does it work? Well, you better be prepared for a long explanation. On the other hand, if you were to ask uh, an astronomer like my cousin Douglas, what is light? How does it work? He would give you a fascinating answer. On the other hand, if you were to ask an artist, what is light? How does it work? Again, you would get a different but a complementary answer. Yes, light is something ordinary that we take for granted, and yet it's a wonderful gift, a wonderful creation of God. And of course, light is talked about quite a bit in the Bible, in God's word, as in those readings that we just heard. Uh, it is a, a metaphor for our walk with God. It's light that illuminates God uh, for us, and it's light, his light, that guides us and leads us day by day. Well, let's ask a physicist, shall we, about light. I'd like to share a story with you from Regis Nickel. Regis Nickel is a retired nuclear engineer, and he tells an interesting, fascinating story about light. When Jesus told his disciples, I am the light of the world, he was saying something deeply profound about himself. In fact, my academic background in physics convinces me that nothing in the material universe reveals as much about the divine nature. Most of us think of light as a source of illumination that renders the material world visible. We also think of light metaphorically as illumination to truth and rational argument. But light is more than illumination. It is a source of life. In the late 1700s, it was discovered that the carbon food cycle depended on photosynthesis. Thus, biological life as we know it would not exist without light. However, it was in the early 20th century that some real mind-numbing discoveries were made. In 1905, Albert Einstein rattled the cages of the Scientific Academy with his theory of special relativity. While most people associate his theory with the relative nature of time, its real significance is the invariable nature of light. That same year, 1905, uh, Einstein made another dazzling discovery. He found that light has dual and complementary natures, exhibiting properties of both waves and particles. Thus, in its dual nature, light mimics the mystery of Christ's humanity and divinity. And so life, light is a source of illumination, revelation, and life, an ideal standard, constant, ageless, omnipresent, and omnipotent with a dual nature. Astonishing. 1900 years before Einstein, the Apostle John used an expression that anticipated the insights of modern physics. It is an expression that would take on added significance in my life. And Regis Nickel there is referring to John chapter 1, verse 9, where it says, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. You see, Mr. Nickel was diagnosed with cancer, a rare and terminal cancer. And, of course, he went through all sorts of different treatments and even surgeries. And he tells us, Nine months after my diagnosis, I underwent an eight-hour surgery that claimed parts of my diaphragm, lung, and liver. With all visible signs of the disease removed, I overheard my oncologist remark to a colleague, there's Lazarus. The words of the psalmist echoed in my mind, 
For you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Psalm 56, 13. How true that was. During my illness, he says, I experienced that light more intensely and continuously than at any time before or since. It came to me daily through people and circumstances, one of which I'll share here. Four months after my diagnosis, I participated in a cancer retreat sponsored by the Catholic-based hospital where I was being treated. One of the activities during the retreat was a prayer walk. The leader suggested that we <clears throat> converse with God or just listen for his whisper as we take in sensory cues from his creation. On that hot June afternoon, I chose a path that was well shaded the thick canopy of foliage provided an effective shield from the oppressive heat of the sun while helping my eyes adjust after the dark conference room we had just left. Before I was well, <clears throat> excuse me, before I was well into the walk, I noticed that the comfortable coolness I had first experienced was not quite as comfortable. With each step, I felt more and more isolated from light, warmth, and my retreat cohorts. Darkness, coolness, everything in the world beyond was becoming further removed. My feet stopped. I glanced to my left, then to my right, then behind me. My heart pounded. It occurred to me, this is my walk in the valley of the shadow of death. I lurched forward and picked up my pace until I remembered the promises in the beloved psalm. I stopped again. With the gloom of my condition threatening to divert my attention from the gentle nudge of the shepherd's staff, I resumed my journey with eyes focused straight ahead. The path twisted and turned until off in the distance, I made out a shaft of light where the trail opened up into a field bathed in the sun's rays. My eyes became transfixed on that opening. Shallow breathed, I advanced until I approached the threshold separating the path from the field. I stopped for a third time. This time, it wasn't from fear, but a desire to remember. To remember the darkness and coolness behind me, the tinge of dread that gripped me, and the gravitational pull of the light. As I stepped into the open field, the sudden sensation of brightness and warmth felt like an unrestrained embrace from the everlasting arms. In that lingering moment, there was ineffable comfort, but there was also a lesson. In the real life value, valley I was passing through, I was not to let the concerns of my condition take my focus off him. He would lead me into green pastures. I needed but to watch and follow. Whether I would experience those pastures in the here and now or in the hereafter, I did not know. What I did know is that whatever path he would lead me down would be for my greatest good and for his highest glory. In the years hence, my life has taken turns I could never have imagined. Not only did I leave a 30-year career in the nuclear power field, I began a ministry as full-time writer and teacher of the Christian worldview, and the blessings have been beyond merit and measure, and measure. Every time I think on all that has transpired, my thoughts turn to the light, the true light that gives light to every man coming in the world. I am the light of the world, Jesus says to you and me today. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? Do you experience the illumination and the warmth of his light in your life? I encourage you to read his word. Read the Gospel of John. Read all those wonderful passages in which God speaks to you of the light by which he will lead you through the valley of the shadow of death into the green pastures of communion 
and life and eternal fellowship with him. If you'd like to know more, I encourage you to contact me or to contact your pastor and to find out more. There's always more to learn about the wonderful gift of light. Not only the physical light that surrounds us, but also the one who is the light of the world, our Savior, our brother, our friend, Jesus Christ. In his name, amen.